In this lesson, we're looking specifically at stratified sampling. We talked about sampling methods, but this one is about stratified sampling. So we've talked about the different sampling strategies, which can be used to collect a variety of data. Um, but we've also mentioned tools and techniques which can assist. We're specifically looking at this one today, our stratified sampling. So stratified sampling is a method where data is collected from an ecosystem in a way that include samples from all subgroups within the larger ecosystem. And ecosystems are sampled this way, uh, the ones that are, have distinct non-overlapping homogeneous habitats within them, okay? So really clear distinction between them. Um, it can be used in the ocean at different depths where light penetration and pressure and stuff like that uh, differ. Uh, it can be talked about in a forest, which it usually is, where we can see really distinct layers of vegetation. Uh, it can be done horizontally as well if you're talking about distance from the, the ocean or the shore, or whatever. Stratified sampling is done to ensure the samples from an ecosystem are truly representative of an entire ecosystem. Okay, Just like any other form of sampling could be used to estimate populations, density, distribution, environmental gradients, whatever it is. The data has to be from all distinct parts of the ecosystem and it's got to be collected in a proportional way to get an accurate picture of the entire ecosystem. Now, stratified sampling can't start without the process of stratification, and that's when you actually determine, well, what distinct parts do I have? Okay, and we split it into strata or layers, depending on what's present. So once the strata have been decided upon, they have to be sampled in a meaningful meaningful way. And I say meaningful because this sampling has got to be done proportionally, so mathematically proportionally. There's no point taking 10 samples from each strata uh, just to keep it nice and even if one of them is more predominant than the other. Okay, Strata can be spatial, so existing in a physical space, horizontal donate, uh, zonation or vertical layers, things like the forest we we're talking about, or they can actually be temporal, which means they're existing over a period of time, like throughout different seasons or years. Now, when you sample in a stratified way, we have to sample each stratum, obviously, um, but it's just like any other sampling technique, so using the exact same types of things we're talking about. If you're sampling, say, an area of mangrove, um, you know, you have an environmental gradient between salt water and fresh water, and it might be that you systematically identify the different strata, but then you use a random technique within each strata if you use a random number generator and a grid, okay? The entire strategy doesn't have to be random random or systematic, they can be used in conjunction with one another to give you a good overall representation of what you're trying to measure. Now, given that uh, it is just a normal sampling technique, we're talking about the same, uh, sorry, a sampling design, we are using the same techniques uh, that we talked about in field work. Obviously, each of these techniques has their own pros and cons, and we're going to focus on that in class more. Uh, but in the context of stratified sampling, choosing a technique to use will always be based on what's practical, what's available, and what can be measured, or sorry, what is being measured. Quadrats are nice, quick, and easy. Uh, they can be accurate for large specimens or uh, species, but really difficult with small ones or more mobile ones. Uh, it's challenging if the species is not actually on the surface of the ground. So you might be talking about plants. One plant has many runners underneath the soil, and you can't tell whether those two organisms are part of the same. Um, you know, you need to be able to identify species and that's where things get challenging. If you misidentify a species and you think they are the same one, your data might not be accurate. Also difficult if species are at different stages of life uh, and look different, but they are the exact same species in that population. Transects are really low impact and can assess, um, you know, the presence or absence really easily along the gradient. But if rare species exist in that area, they're probably going to be missed, right? Um, belt transects uh, are used for more than just counts. They can be used for things like abundance and distribution, but at the end of the day, it can be really time consuming. Marking and recapture is the best option for mobile animals, highly mobile animals, but once again, it's really time consuming and it's also equipment consuming as well, given the animals need to be trapped. Um, ethics really need to be considered in this situation when you're designing traps, tagging them, all those kinds of things. Um, and, and mark and recapture has its own limitations. It means that, you know, if you're trapping and tagging animals, you might actually alter their normal behavior. Um, you're changing their mobility. You might be changing up the predator prey balance. Um, and also some animals become trap happy. They like going in there to get the food. So they keep coming back over and over. 
uh, tagging and markings, you know, if you've uh, not done it well or you're using a different method, you might have them lost so the tags might break or the, the markings might rub off between captures. To evaluate stratified sampling, it's a really complex situation, right? So understanding the, a, the biotic and the abiotic relationships in an ecosystem and the tolerance ranges of different organisms, it's dependent upon the accuracy of the data. But again, this is a quite a complex uh, sampling method. It has more representative values, there's less error in your sampling data, and it uses a large data set, right? That, they're all the good things. However, random samples might not cover all areas of a habitat equally. So even if within your strata, if you're doing the random sampling method, it might not still capture everything that you need. It does require knowledge of strata and the ability to distinguish between them. If you walk into a forest and you cannot tell where the understory is versus the canopy, that's going to really challenge your data collection. And this is a really long winded um, and complex process. So it's going to cost a lot of money and it's going to take a lot of time for researchers to do it and do it properly. We are going to continue talking about stratified sampling in our next lesson.